I'm still in shock after what happened yesterday when we saw far-right terrorists storm the United States Capitol and take it over. There's so much to talk about, so many angles to cover, and honestly, I, I'm still shocked by this, and I think that this really speaks to the poor shape that our country is in, because even if Donald Trump is on his way out in a couple of weeks, the fact that this many people were duped into believing this con man, that this election was stolen to the point where they would literally storm the Capitol in an attempt to do some sort of revolution or coup, whatever their intentions were, this is not healthy. Democracy can't survive if this continues. If we have a large portion of, of the population who doesn't even believe that our elections are free and fair. Now, if they were successful, which they wouldn't have been, but if they were successful and they were able to permanently stop the certification of the election results and somehow get Donald Trump to remain president, they think that they'd be the ones that are being patriotic and saving democracy, when in actuality, that's not the case. They're believing someone who is delusional. Now, we're going to talk through some things that really stood out to me that shows how dangerous this is. Like, you can you can point to the folks who were taking selfies and just kind of walking through, sitting at Nancy Pelosi's desk, but this was very serious. So, first of all, they found at least one IED on Capitol grounds, and second of all, one terrorist was seen with zip ties. Now, this is important because it indicates that he was planning on taking hostages. Thank God he didn't. But he was planning to do that. Now, also, at the RNC and DNC headquarters, which is just a couple of blocks away from the Capitol, things were taking place that are extremely disturbing, to say the least. So they found a pipe bomb at the RNC headquarters and at the DNC headquarters. They also found a package that looked suspicious. Now, it hasn't been identified at the time of this recording, but we have to call this what it is. This is fascism. This is fascism instigated directly, incited directly by the President of the United States, and I want to share with you this compilation video that Mother Jones put together that really shows you how specifically Trump's words led to what happened at the U.S. Capitol. Take a look. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Proud boys. Stand back and stand by. I am your president of law and order. As he spoke, a remarkable scene unfolded outside the White House. The members of our armed forces were moving forcefully. Fired at, gassed, and shoved. The president's uh, tweet, an extraordinary line, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. We will kill you! But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. This election will decide whether we will defend the American way of life or whether we will allow a radical movement to completely dismantle and destroy it. We're going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love Pennsylvania Avenue. And we're going to the Capitol. We're going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I want to thank you all. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you all for being here. This is incredible. Thank you very much. Mr. President, stop inspiring people to commit potential acts of violence. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to get shot. Someone's going to get killed. They brought out a woman on a stretcher, rushed her inside, blood gushing from her. Uh, we're told that she was shot in the chest. A short time ago, we learned that she has died. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened, where they could take it away from all of us, from me, from you, from our country. This was a fraudulent election. So go home. We love you. You're very special. Now, Donald Trump is directly responsible, and I hope that there are consequences, but I doubt there will be any consequences. I think he is facing a temporary suspension from Twitter and Facebook, but you, 
you basically incited a seditious act. How is he not impeached again and jailed for something like this? This is literally traitor shit that we're seeing from the president. He encouraged all of this. And any Republican who was opposing the certification of the election results, anyone who basically pandered to Donald Trump and played his game all to appeal to Trump's base, they're also responsible. And it's why I fully support the effort by Representative Cory Bush to get any Republican who encouraged this expelled from Congress. Because here's the thing, we cannot have a government where a large portion of them are pandering to literal traitors who want to overthrow our democratic regime. We can't have that. We can't allow it. If you don't believe in democracy, you can't serve in Congress. And even if these Republicans like Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz don't even believe the lies that they're spewing and they're just pandering, it doesn't matter. What you're doing is seditious. This is sedition. You're traitors. Just like Donald Trump, you all have to go. You have to be expelled from Congress. So this is deeply disturbing. There's really no amount of... Um, of me talking or commentary that I could that I can um, supply you with here that really does justice to just how outrageous the situation is. This this is going to be a problem, and I think that a lot of folks are under this impression that once Donald Trump is gone, everything is going to be okay. Things will get back to quote unquote normal, but that's not going to be the case. It's not like Donald Trump, you know, he convinced all of these people. Well, I shouldn't say that. He did convince them, at least when it comes to, you know, the election being stolen. But it's not like, you know, he is what made them crazy. They were already predisposed to be duped by a demagogue like Donald Trump because of the circumstances in this country. Had the circumstances in this country been better, we wouldn't have even gotten a Donald Trump. But we had a demagogue come along and capitalized on the pain and suffering of people in this country. And if we don't take care of that, people will still be susceptible to radicalization. And things like this will happen. There could be another demagogue that comes along that isn't as idiotic as Donald Trump, who actually can pull off a coup. So we're in serious trouble as a country. I hate to say that, but we really are. We are in serious trouble. When you have far-right terrorists successfully storming the U.S. Capitol, and Capitol Police arguably letting them in. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. Explain it. Either they let them in or they failed. You know, you, you can see different videos that point to different things, but we're in serious trouble. And if we don't fix this problem, then I don't know how American democracy can survive. I don't know how America itself can survive. If this many fucking people are batshit insane. Conservatives in America, they don't just believe in small government and gun rights anymore. They're fucking insane. They are lunatics. You can't work with these people. You can't even have a policy debate with them because they don't even buy into reality anymore. So how do you go forward as a country with these folks? We're going to have to come to grips with this because the Trump era is coming to an end but Trumpism and what he represents and the delusion that is widespread in this country, that's not going to go away anytime soon. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.